but now it's introduced something that goes on in nature. In fact, it happens quite a bit. Does it seem like Yvette, I don't know, it, you give an object, whether it's, I guess, not alive, not a mouse or something, do things seem more stable if they have extra energy or the least energy possible? Where would they seem the most stable, the most long-lasting, and just sit there, not change? It's low energy. That's, the, that's the, the concept that I really like you to, to ingrain, especially when it comes to, to science. Low energy is what things are always after, right? So, because they're just more stable, balls roll down hills, and they stay at the bottom. They don't just instantly roll to the top. So, the lower the energy, the, the better the stability. So with these resonance structures, there's a, something that happens in nature, and here's an example of it is if you look at something like this, look where you can put those double bonds. Now, you don't really see any carbons here, but everywhere where you see a junction, you're supposed to have a, you're supposed to write a C, but that's their notation, okay? But notice how these double bonds, they, they kind of alternate. They could, and then they alternate them and they write this structure. So whenever you can do that, so they're not moving the atoms around, they're just moving the electrons around. And when you can do that, that's resonance. That's more than one way of existing in nature, and it's really helps those electrons bounce around. It makes things much more stable. And so that it happens so much that they forget they don't even do this anymore. It's kind of like us and sig figs. They don't even write this anymore. They write it this way. They just draw a big circle in the middle, saying, eh, those electrons are just about kind of bouncing around in there. Okay? We call it aromatic. And it happens a lot. So Here's something I added. It's not in your notes, but I'm in. We're in the middle, kind of here, of writing the Lewis dot structure. Bianca, would it matter which which O we put the double bond with? No, right? Because what and this literally you can do. You can move the double bond to another oxygen and just simply rotate it, right? Because you're not changing the, the molecule, right? It's a, it's the exact same molecule. You can't tell. But the double bond, I mean, these are different oxygens. You could call them A, B, C, and actually move that double bond between an oxygen C. But if you rotate it, it goes back to the same thing. They're mirror images, you can, right? They're the same thing, symmetric. You can't tell. So this is, there's three ways that this molecule can exist and all be the same molecule. It is, man. It's almost like having, what do you call it when someone has multiple Personalities? <laughs> Multiple personalities, yeah. Okay, so if that was a more stable way of existing in nature, see this only works really for dead things, right? But if there's a more stable way of being, if it was more stable for you to have multiple personalities, everyone would have a gazillion of these things, right? So it's, that's just nature. So I say we just run up to the boards and knock this stuff out, and then we, you guys can Go enjoy your break. So let's go ahead and try one. Well, you want to do this one together? Yeah. All right, fine. Okay. So th imagine this as a quiz or an exam. You don't know if you draw resonance structures or not. So you don't change any of the rules. A resonance structure, you'll see. It's, you don't change any of the rules. You draw the Lewis dot structure. So what would you do first, Taylor? Draw that Lewis dot structure of carbonate. Yeah, draw the structure of the skeleton. So how would you draw the skeleton of carbonate? Put C where? In the, in the middle. Put C in the middle. Now I'm going to write it over to the side because I know it's the resonance thing. Then you spread the O's out. Okay. They didn't tell you it was linear or anything. So that's why you, you play this game. You put the first atom in the middle, everything else around it, as long as, as, long as it's not hydrogen. OK, Lauren, now what? We well, don't know how many dots, though, Lauren. OK, C is 4. OK, add them up for me. C is 4. The O is 6, but times 3. So that's 18. 
you hear all that? Perfect. The negative 2 means you have to add 2 more, she says. So I've got 24 total. Okay. Now, to, to help us out, because I know what's coming up, getting these molecular shapes, Christian, I really strongly suggest doing, putting these dots that Lauren wanted to do in a certain order. First, connect stuff. Make octets around everything surrounding, and then if you have any dots left over, put them on the center atom. Okay? So, kind of keep track of my count here for me. <laughs> so, I'm just going to start putting this stuff on there, and you count them up and see if I have any left over or what the deal is. Okay? Do I have any left over that I can put on the center atom? Do I have any left over? Did I use too many? So if I use too many, I have to start erasing dots. There's 24, right? Okay. So, Gloriana, can we just, oh, with the negative 2, can we just put a, what do you call this? Brackets and write negative 2 and be done? I don't know. What's wrong with it? Nothing. Sure. The oxygens are happy. The C only has six, right? Okay. So there you, there you go. So you see what we did? First, we counted them up, connected them, dots around all the surrounding, anything left over, we put on the middle. Then you look at it, make sure everything's happy. And we found carbon isn't. And then you do a little CNOS check, because we don't have a better rule right now. All we know is CNOS. There's going to be a lot better rule, but this is how the book does it. Fine. CNOS. Can we make double bonds? Yeah. Does it matter? That's how do you make a double bond? What would you do, uh, Desiree? Yeah. Take away the two dots first, though. All right. She, all right. Take away the two dots first, and then do the line. Okay, this is resonance, because Adelpho, now what can we do? What could we have done? It's right now, yeah, but couldn't we write another structure? Isn't there multiple answers? Yeah, what, what other structure could you write? Make the double bond with? Another oxygen. And the only reason, the only reason why this works is because all those O's are the same. If all those, right, they're all oxygen atoms. If it wasn't all oxygen atoms, it's not resonance because it's not the same thing, right? Let's make the double bond with another one. Well, we have our C, one, two. Let's make it with the one on the, what is that? Right or left? That's left, right? Make it over there. So then he's only going to have two lone pairs. Everything else says eight. Draw your brackets. Okay. But it's three identical oxygens, so draw another one. Draw a third one. Okay, one thing that's missing in their notation. Has anyone seen this in the reading? What do they do between all the possible answers? They're going to draw little, little arrows, just something that they bounce back and forth. So just draw some little arrows, double-headed arrows, showing that they're bouncing back and forth. You don't know which one it is. At any moment in time, it's one of these. Who knows which one? But this really helps carbonate be much more stable than it should be, since it has these multiple resonance structures. It can exist in more than one form all at the same time. And that's a very odd thing, but that's just how nature is. Okay. 
So before we go to the board, let's see if we can write a resonance. Oh, this is a Maria. There's no hints for this. For A, I want to draw the skeleton structure of it before I send you to the boards. Do you recognize what kind of compound A is? It was a uh, has an H out front. It's hint. It's an acid. All these acids, that H is always connected to an O. So when you draw the Lewis dot structure of this, there's usually some kind of hint on here saying, you know, giving you a hint of what the structure is. But sometimes there isn't. And when there isn't, they're expecting you to realize that. That's a really tough thing to expect. But what will we probably put in the middle? And right? And the three O's. And the H is just on one of the O's is all. Whoop. So something that I, I would probably give you the structure of it, because how would you know, right? OK. So that's what the structure would be. So if, if you can imagine it, what might happen, you only do resonance if you can, where could you see the two resonance possibilities in here? The, which, there's three O's, which two? Yeah, these two, right? Because this O is different. He's bonded to that H. He's not going to be part of a resonance structure. Fine, you can have a double bond here if it makes things happy. That's another po I don't know if it works or not. But the double bond up here and the double bond right here, that's, if you can do it, that would be your resonance and have them bouncing around. Okay? So let's go try this. Help each other out, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so let's try this one. HNO3. HNO3. Figure out the total valence here. So again, before you start making double bonds, make the skeleton structure first. Otherwise, it's it really it's too easy to lose count. Because you know there's resonance, but because it's a question that says resonance, but and the quizzes they may not tell you that, right? So hopefully you're coming up with 24 total, right? Does everything have an octet? The, and are you using 24? And, and you are using 24 electrons? Yes. OK. If that works, then. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you can move that double bond. Instead of having picked this one, instead of having picked this one to make the double bond, Examples that you can give. Yeah. Yeah. And except in this one, you're not going to make the example of uh, having the double bond over here, mm -hmm. because it's a, yeah, because that's a different oxygen. You can't tell. Okay. Did you use all 24? Wait. Do 
the dots count? Yeah, count, count, count by twos. Yeah. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24. You have 24. Okay. Great. Okay, so this works. And then you're looking at it. You can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. So you, But you can make another possible answer. Instead of making the double bond right here, make it up here. And then you could also make it right here. So, so there's, three, the there's three possibilities. <laughs> but there's only one difference. When you draw those little arrows between bouncing around between all the possibilities, you can't include this one. Because look, he's, connect, he's a different O. He's connected to an H. So these two O's are identical, not that one. So there are. There's, you draw, write down all the possibilities, and there's three of them, except only two of them are, gonna, are going to be resonance structures. All right? Only two are going to be possible resonance structures. See? Now, hang on. Do you, why do you have, you can't have bonds going to a bond. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. Okay. And we don't need everything yeah. Easy. Now, there's another, there's a third possible answer. You can't draw arrows with them. Right? You see the third possible answer? The double bond right here. Yeah. Right? But you can't draw an arrow to them. But oh. he's a third possible answer. Why can't you draw an arrow? Because he's a different oxygen. These have to look identical. Resonance oh, structures okay. have to look identical. All you do is rotate it, and it's the same thing. Yeah, but don't put an arrow to it. Right. So it doesn't, like, we just put arrows to those just, two? Just an arrow to the, to the two where you can actually just rotate them and get the same thing again. Okay, and then we would, like, write it, well, we can write it over here, but not put an arrow. Yeah. But, or if they're, actually, in this question, since they're saying write resonance descriptions, you don't even have to include uh, okay. the third one. Okay. In this question, since they're asking for resonance descriptions, you really don't have to even include that third possibility. But if they didn't, then the I would write out everything. So make, if, you, if everyone around you got the answer, go on to the next one, the sulfur trioxide. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, now, but they want for, let's see, did you use too many electrons? Two? Oh, but look at the nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You have too many. Mm -hmm. So only one double bond at a time. Okay. Yeah, only one double bond at a time. So you'll have, so put his two dots back. And then here's one of them. And then we'll notice that this oxygen is identical to that one. Mm -hmm. So, you just so there you go. And then you put arrows between the two. Oh, okay. Where are you at? Oh, you're way down here. Okay. Now look at watch your sulfur. Look how many you have. You're going you're going too quick. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You have twelve electrons around that sulfur. And this nitrogen, you have two, four, six, eight, ten. All right. Mm -hmm. You have 10. So see how, oh, she erased it. But up here, you can see the, the HNO3. See how the double bonds are between one oxygen, and then they're bounced over to the other one. And everything has 8, not, not 10. And the 24 is being used. Now, on sulfur trioxide, all those oxygens are identical. So you're going to have three possible answers, I think. Just make sure you don't lose your count. Make sure you're using, everyone agrees, 24, let's see, 18, 24, right? 24 electrons. 
So make sure you watch the octet rule. Because you had like, I don't know, yeah. 12 or so around there. Get it? Okay, you don't have, you need 24 electrons though. So get all 24 on there first. Okay. Right? Because 3 times 6 is 18, plus another 6 is 24. 2, 4, for, well, first connect them, but then octets around everything. Yeah, the dots. And then let's count and see how many, we, we need two more here. Alright, then if there's anything left over, we're going to put them here. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. So 8, 16, 24. We're done. But sulfur only has two, four, six. So now you have to well, erase, make a double bond, move them over. Because now this guy still has eight, two, four, six, eight. But this sulfur now has two, four, six, eight. He's good. And then it could, why not this oxygen? Fine, you have to do him. Why not this oxygen? Fine, do him too. So the answer is bouncing around between all three of those. Yes. And then, yeah, and you have total 24. So now, the, now you have to ask yourself, well, why not this oxygen? You can't, it will happen. And then why not this one? So you'd have to draw three structures total. Okay. With that double bond here and there, and then there are little arrows in between them all. Yeah, just, it doesn't matter. Double-headed arrows showing that it's going back and forth. Oh yeah, if, if, if the folks around you, if you agree with the folks around you, go on to the next one. But don't fly, you know, it helps you uh, immensely if you can explain it to somebody around you. Yeah, it looks good. If you're on the nitromethane question, let the question kind of guide you, guide your thinking. It's talking about resonance. So it says, so that means right off the bat, you know there's resonance here. And you can kind of tell where that double bond is going to be bouncing around just by looking at that skeleton structure. There's, no, there's really no choice. If you don't see it, just ask. Once hydrogen has one bond, he quits. Because then he's got the same as helium. And it's oxygen? Now the oxygen, they need, everything else needs eight. But hydrogen's done with two. Okay. Ashlyn, so just looking at the question, they say there's resonance. So if you're looking at this thing, where could you be moving double bonds around and have the exact same structure? Those two, exactly. I mean, this one might have worked. I bet it wouldn't have. Two, four, six. Eight. No, it would have had ten. See, that carbon would have oh, had ten. Yeah. Thank you. So, nitromethane, what's your total for your electrons? Oh, oh, oh I see that. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> So you're coming up with 24 electrons, hopefully, for nitromethane. And it, the question itself says resonance structures. So just looking at it, hopefully you can tell where the double bond's bouncing around. Uh, do you have 24 being used up? It should work then. It should work then. I want to write it and then it's wrong. Yeah. That's 
24, right? And everyone's got 8. And since the question says resonance, you're only, I mean, you can, I wouldn't mess it in here. It's got the double bond has to be over here, because then you have two structures that are the same. So the next, the next structure would be, it would be down there. You have to draw both, though. It has to bounce around and have a little arrow showing that it's bouncing around between them. And you need the rest of your electrons on here. Right. So there would be the oxygen only has six. Yeah, well, before you, before you do double bonds, get 24 electrons on here. Oh, right there. Right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Right? Give everything octets. Okay, now you look at this, and because you always do this first, don't jump into double bonds, because the answer could be right here. But he's not happy. So we can make a double bond between one of these options. Yeah. There you go. Then why not the other ones? Then you have to draw the other one too. Xe has eight. Each fluorine has, yeah, so follow the general rule where you make octets surround everything surrounding. Anything left over, put on the middle atom. Yeah. Yeah. They probably will. So is that okay? That's the rules. Yep. And that's it. Actually works. And if you follow, if you follow that trend of making octets around everything surrounding, then anything left over when that happens, put on the middle. Then that is exactly what happens in nature. It's a X, not a K, though, oh. Ashley. Okay. Well, you have to have 22, right? If you're messing with this one, you have 8 plus 14, you have 22. So again, follow that general rule. Draw the skeleton. Make octets around everything surrounding. Anything left over goes where? In that center atom. Exactly. That's what you have to do. So is he obeying the octet rule? Oh, no. no. You need more. You don't have enough. All right. A lot of folks are working on this one. So uh, hopefully you put xenon in the middle, right? Because it's the first one. Then you put your Fs. Again, first connect. I, just follow this general. Do it always the same way every time. And you'll just hit the right answer a lot quicker. Connect. Make octets on everything surrounding. Right? OK, so I've used up 16 so far. Right? So anything left over goes on the middle one. And keep them paired up. I need three lone pairs. Is xenon obeying the octet rule? No, he's not. But kind of space them out in like a triangle shape. It's really going to help for coming up after break. And keep, keep those electrons paired up. And that's, the, that or, that's that orbital idea. Keep them paired up. So that's easy to count and see, oh, xenon has three lone pairs, just by looking at your structure. It'll really help you what's coming up.
Try the next one. Xenon or xenon tetrafluoride cation. Five fluorines. Xenon's not obeying the octet rule. So I can do that? You have to. You have no choice. Okay. This molecule exists. So that's to be five bonds to xenon. Do you have 42? It's 43. But it's a cation. So you have to add one. You have to subtract one. Oh, yeah. So what's the total on the electrons? 43 or 42? 42. 42. Good, because it's a cation. As long as you have used up all 42, did you use up all 42? Good. So how many lone pairs are you ending up on xenon? Any? I hear one, I hear two. There's some different answers up here. I see more one lone pairs than two, though. You have to use 42. You need 42 total. You only have, what, 40? Because each one has eight, so I just do eight times five. So 40, so you still need two more. So hopefully you have one lone pair on that xenon when you're all done. It has to be F5. This guy, everything is connected to that center atom. Okay, have a good break. So hopefully when you work this out, you had one lone pair left over. And you put it on the xenon. Try, iod try, try iodide once you get this. Try iodide. It's an anion. Oh, and Jessica, keep your dots paired up. Yeah, your lone pair. Keep them paired up. Because we'll be counting lone pairs next class period. How many valence you got, dancing man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Good thing you're not sitting at the table. You'd be sleeping right now. Oh, I know. It's the only thing keeping you awake. <coughs> I see a lot of 22s. That's good. Right? Because 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1, 22. So 22 valence electrons. Twenty-two to work with. Make octets. Anything left over, put on the center atom. Oh, and Yvette, if they're supposed to be three lone pairs, don't try to keep them off the bonds. It'll, be, it'll look better. It'll be easier to see what's coming up. Try to make a triangle or something out of them, yeah. Oh, no double bonds, though, because CNOS. All we know right now is CNOS, right? I's not in CNOS. Uh, <laughs> yep. And it'll be a much better rule coming up, but we just have to live with CNOS. Good. Oh, yeah, and then the I minus. Does it matter if it's like that or like this? Well, they're not, they're not making a circle, though. You can bend them, but it has to be like that. Like this. Yep. Good. Use all 22, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good deal. So it looks like folks are ending up with three lone pairs on that center iodine. And don't forget your brackets and the... You have five minutes. See if you can knock out this last one. Iodine tetrafluoride. No double bonds because CNOS, there's no carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. So can you draw, here's a trick question, can you draw resonance structures with something like iodine tetrafluoride? Can you draw resonance structures with something like this? No, because it's not CNOS. Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> See what Brianna gets. Make sure your totals right. Four, five, six, thirty-five. Okay, are you getting thirty-six as a total? Good deal. That sounds good to me. Your brackets because it has a charge. <laughs> Don't lose those easy points. You need a bracket. I see two lone pairs on that center atom, and most everybody's answers. That must be right. To give you a little heads up as to what's coming. Those lone pairs, those electrons, they take up a lot of space. So the best way to situate them is as far apart as possible. Right now, we don't know that, but put one on top and one on bottom. And then if you start, when you have electrons left over and you start spreading them out as much as possible, you're really helping yourself for Monday after break, spreading those lone electrons out as much as you can.
So have a good break.